Hi, welcome to part 3 of the video series for the MCO CNC lathe retrofit. In this video I will go over the working principles of the tool turret, the electrical connections and how to program the CNC controller to drive the turret. The MCO lathe has a 6 position tool turret, which can hold 3 tool holders with a thickness of up to 12mm. There are also 3 positions for tooling in line with the spindle axis. These are typically used for drills and boring bars. The old electronic parts that were removed from the lathe came separately in the box. I will not reuse most of this stuff, but I am going to reuse the driver board for the turret. My goal here was to use the existing turret board and to program the SSGH controller to read the input from this board and then to drive the turret according to the tool change commands in the G-code of a lathe program. In the forum thread, I found some very useful information posted by a gentleman who had done a similar retrofit. I will link the information posted by the user Even Gravy in the description below. So I started with this information and tested the motor driver board on my own lathe. The driver board is connected to the 24 volt power supply on the upper right connector. The motor leads go to the 3 pin connector to the left of this. A double pole double throw relay is used to connect the motor to 24 volts for forward turret motion and a reduced reverse voltage for backward motion. The motor can rotate freely when moving forward across all six tool positions. When moving to a specific tool position, the turret should be rotated slightly past it. The motor should then be reversed. A ratchet with six notches is used to lock the turret at that position. When the lathe is turned on, the reverse voltage is always engaged, so the turret is continuously pressing back against the pole of the ratchet, holding it in place. I have mounted the driver board in the lathe at a temporary position. The lathe itself is turned off and I am supplying the driver board with an external power supply, which allows me to measure the current used by the board for driving the motor. A separate 24 volt lead is used to activate the relay for this test. The turret rotates forward at full speed when the relay is on. When the relay is turned back off, the turret rotates at a reduced speed and backs itself into the nearest tool position. When I measure the voltage across the motor leads, it indeed shows 24 volts when rotating forward. The voltage is much lower when the motor rotates backwards, at around 10 volts. Part of the power used in reverse is dissipated into the heatsink of the motor while it is holding the turret in position. However, most of it is dissipated by the four green power resistors on the board. This setup is likely chosen to prevent the motor from overheating. The resistors are wired in series with the motor when it is in reverse mode. I am measuring around 85 degrees Celsius. I do not have a data sheet on the specific resistor type, but comparable resistors are able to handle well over 200 degrees Celsius, so I think the temperature I'm measuring is not an issue. Of course in the final setup I will have active cooling in the cabinet to make sure everything stays as cool as possible. I have seen retrofits where the DC motor was replaced by a stepper motor, but I first wanted to get the lathe up and running to see if the original motor is working for me or if an upgrade is needed. The position of the tool turret is tracked with two optical sensors. The sensors are mounted on a small circuit board in the back of the turret, which operates at 5 volts. The two sensors are placed at a different height. One of the sensors triggers at each tool position, while the other one only triggers at the first position. So this last sensor can be used to home the turret by finding position 1. Because the turret rotates back into place when it reaches the intended position, it breaks the signal again for that position. This is something that needed to be taken care of in the program steering the turret in order to prevent counting the position twice. In order to read the signals from the optical sensors, I needed some way to connect them to the SSGH controller. Besides general purpose I.O. ports, there is actually a dedicated connector for the turret I.O. on the controller. It has 9 inputs that can be used for this purpose. Many different sensor types can be used as long as they are of the MPN type. If I oversimplify things, these MPN sensors will make a contact to the negative common when triggered. They are also called sinking sensors. As an alternative, you can just place a physical switch or a relay between the negative common and one of the inputs. The input becomes high when the connection is made. I experimented with an optocoupler between the sensor board and the SIGH controller input. 
I will spare you the details, but it turned out that the difference between the on and off state of the optocoupler did not trigger the input. I decided to go a different route and just placed a mechanical relay board in between. It works fine and even provides galvanic isolation. The relay board is triggered by the sensor and then just mechanically makes a connection between the negative common and the desired input, which is exactly what we need. Programming the turret to work with the controller turned out to be quite straightforward. Although when I started looking into this it actually seemed quite daunting because I did not really know where to begin. I contacted SIGH support and asked them how to approach this and if they had an example for a counting turret. They gave me some very useful directions and a sample program. This still needed to be modified slightly for my setup, but it made it a lot easier for me to understand how to program the turret. First of all, it's good to know that the SIGH controller can operate a turret straight out of the box, but by default it works with turrets that have a sensor on each tool position. As mentioned, my turret has an encoder wheel at the back with only two sensors, one that triggers every position and the other one that triggers at the first position for homing the turret. In the controller, a couple of settings needed to be adjusted to be able to run a custom macro for this type of turret. In the tool parameter menu, parameter P2 should be set to a number of tool positions plus one. So in my case, I have to set it to seven, since I have six tool positions. Parameter 20 has to be changed from one to zero. Number one indicates the standard configuration with the default turret logic, and zero indicates a custom turret. To operate the custom turret, you have to modify the file called program tool. One way to do this is to back up all the lathe setting files to a USB drive. This copies all files to the USB drive, including the program tool file. Then you can modify the file as needed on your PC and upload it back into the controller. When importing files back to the controller, you can just copy a single file. Just make sure that you only have the file that you want to copy in the active directory on the USB drive. If you know of any useful tips or tricks for file management on the SRGH controller, please let me know in the comments below. You can also modify the program tool file on the controller itself. It can be edited by going to the diagnosis menu. Then select N for control, type in the password, and then type T to access the program tool file. Now you can view and edit the file directly when you're standing at the machine. I think this is especially useful for debugging and making small changes. For my turret I only need two inputs and a single output. I'm using inputs X0 and X1 for the encoder signals to count the tool positions. The encoder wheel has a single slot at the tool 1 position which goes to input X0. There are also tabs on the encoder wheel for each position for which the signal goes to input X1. Output Y18 is used to run the turret. The output is connected to one of the relays on the I.O. board with dry contacts, so you can switch any type of power source. In this case, the relay will be used to switch the turret motor. So the macro works as follows. When the user enters a tool number, it calculates how many positions need to be rotated to reach the new tool position. It starts the turret, counts the number of pulses from the sensor and stops the turret when the end position is reached. It then stores the new tool number as the current tool. This macro is also used when the turret key is pressed. In that case, the controller just requests the next tool number and runs the macro. With the manual key, it takes one step at a time. The tool number is actually stored in a memory location that is recalled even after the lathe is completely turned off. This eliminates the need to home the turret after powering the lathe on, which is really nice. If for whatever reason the turret displays the wrong position, 
I just commanded to go to tool 1. When tool 1 is requested, the macro only looks for the sensor at tool position 1, so this effectively homes the turret. In order to keep the video short, I will not go through the entire macro file, but I will share it on my website, link below. If you have any specific questions, please post them in the comment section. So that's it for part 3. I will go through several more items in the next video. Please subscribe or leave a like. Thanks for watching.